Okay, algebra nerds. So functional notation, example three. We're gonna introduce a concept called domain, all right? And um, so here's our function. We're supposed to give what they call the domain in interval notation, and we will now demonstrate that. So we've talked about how you can plug numbers in for variables, right? And we usually say any number, stick any number in for x. That's what a variable is. So let's just say for the sake of, per, uh, and, and what this will transform into is a graph. We have x, and remember f of x is another name for y. So, you know, how do you plot things? How do you graph things? You plot points. So let's say that you're gonna pick a number and stick it in for x. For the purposes of illustration, I'm gonna pick the number five because it illustrates what I wanna show and it's my favorite baseball player, George Brett. He played for the Royals back in 1985 when they won the World Series the first time. And there was a student who was, a, there was a person who was a, a grad student at the time that I know who was there for game seven when they won it. And that person ran out and got a, some dirt from the pitcher's mound. And it was really awesome. But anyway, George Brett, number five, my favorite baseball player. So five. So let's say you want to find the ordered pair five comma what? So you put five in for x. So you come over here and you go, all right, f of five, what's that number? What completes the ordered pair? So we've got five minus four over five squared minus three times five minus 10, all right? And so the numerator is one, and if you do the math on the bottom, you discover that the denominator there is zero. And so we have one over zero. And hopefully when one over zero appeared on the screen, you all went You can't divide by zero, that's undefined. So see, sticking five in for x caused a problem. Right? There's like, there's no value of y that goes with it. And, and so five is a problem. And so here's the definition of domain. The set of all values of x for which the function is defined. Well, at five is a value of x for which the function is undefined. We've talked about division by zero. You can't do it, it's undefined. The point is, 5 wouldn't be in the domain for that function, because if you plug it in for x, the function is undefined. So that's the first issue that we will talk about, is division by 0, any value, or maybe values, of x that cause division by 0 are not in the domain. You ain't my domain, 5, okay? Now, so what do you do? Stick every number in and see which ones cause this to happen? No. But I was just showing you that to help you understand. This is not how you would begin to attack the question. What you would do here would be to look at this and say, well, if I want to find the domain, and that particular function has division in it, and we've talked about this, we don't want that denominator to equal zero. So why don't, why don't we go find the numbers that make that equal zero and toss them out, exclude them from the domain. So the very, proactive way of finding the domain would be to say, let's find those numbers that cause that problem of zero on the bottom, okay? And so, that's an equation. This one happens to be quadratic, and it's already in standard form, fortunately, right? So let's factor it. Oh, look, and then we can set each one of these equal to zero. So, this particular one leads to five, which is the number I used in my illustration. Again, I want to point out, you don't start the question by doing what I did over there. I just wanted you to understand that certain numbers cause problems. And five, this confirms that five would cause division by zero. Um, but it's not the only number that would cause that to happen. If we solve the other factor, we'll determine, we'll discover that negative two would also cause division by zero, wouldn't it? And again, who would have just stumbled along here and discovered that that same issue would have occurred over here at negative two? How many of you 
have your favorite baseball or pro athlete, where's the number negative two? Mm, I don't know if you'd have stumbled upon that one just by trial and error, okay? This is the way of finding those bad numbers. Now, the, the easy, so I'm a visual person, I'm gonna draw an x-axis here, because that's what a domain is, the values of x, and not worry about the overall deal, but, um, so what I'm seeing here is that those two numbers cause division by zero, so as the notes say, we exclude them, visually therefore, we put open circles on them, and we say, okay, you know what? As long as you're not one of those two numbers, you're okay. You're okay to plug in for x. We don't have to test anything here. This isn't to be confused with assignment 16 where we play the dating game. We just go, you know what? If you're a number that causes division by zero, you ain't my domain, and you toss them out. That's a picture of a number line with those two excluded. And so in interval notation, as it said in the instructions, our domain would be negative infinity to negative two excluded, or negative two to five, or five to infinity. And there's your domain in interval notation as it wanted. So uh, when there's division by zero, find those numbers that cause division by zero by setting your denominator equal to zero, solve it out, whatever numbers you find, toss them out. You ain't my domain. So um, hopefully you'll enjoy a nice little song from my friend Eric Clip-On. Hope you enjoy it.